All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's gameplay stream. Today is Tuesday, June 28th, 2016. I'm Darkside Phil. Welcome back. And what I mean by that is welcome back to the stream after a day away. I did not live stream yesterday. I was under the weather on Sunday. <clears throat> As you could probably hear if you either listened to my gameplay of Persona 3 or if you watched the weekend preview. Both of which, of course, you should have done, and shame on you if you didn't. Okay, I'm kidding. It's okay if you didn't. I forgive you. But, uh, yeah, my throat was in a really bad way. Uh, I had really bad nasal drip. My throat swelled up, and it was very sore, and I could not talk by the end of the day. And I said, you know what? The best thing to do here, being that I had nothing important on the docket anyway, would be to take a day off, to rest my voice, get stuff done, heal up, and come back full strength today. Because I actually thought that today was going to be a day of two new releases. But I was wrong. I was mistaken. And it is my fault. I was uh, I was not correct in my scheduling of new releases. Uh, I, I did not pay attention to detail. Because the game that I thought was coming out today, it's called Inside. It's from the makers of Limbo. That game that I played a bajillion years ago. The puzzle platformer with shadow mechanics and really gruesome deaths. And, uh, quite honestly, I thought it was coming out today. It's not. It's a Microsoft slash, uh, PC exclusive game, and it's coming out tomorrow. So that being said, I was like, oh boy, <clears throat> so what am I going to do today? Because I have nothing on the schedule, you know? I th thought I was playing inside. And I said, well, it makes sense to go back to Street Fighter V for a day, because the bottom line is there's a big d expansion Coming this weekend, if you're not aware, there's going to be the new characters Ibuki and Balrog, as well as the launch of the, the in-game store, as well as the cinematic story mode, all releasing for Street Fighter V. You know, the stuff that should have been in the game when you paid 60 bucks for it back in February when it released, it's finally coming to the game this weekend. <laughs> you know, only one, two, three, four, five months late. So... With all that being said, I haven't played the game in two months. The last time I touched Street Fighter V was when Guile was released as an expansion character. And I have just been so busy with all the new releases. You know, we had some huge blockbuster-style releases back in May. In June, we had E3 balanced with my parents' visit. And just in general, a lot of stuff going on that I did not have a chance to play this game. So, now is the perfect opportunity for me to go ahead and do a full-on stream three and a half hours of Street Fighter V gameplay, although as some of you know, if you've watched any of my previous Street Fighter V streams, typically what that amounts to is around two hours of gameplay because an hour and a half is, is spent sitting here doing nothing while the matchmaking tries to find matches because every single time that I played until late April, it was never consistent. I'll take it back. I think there was one session of Street Fighter V where I literally got match after match after match, but besides that, it's always kind of been well, waiting around, well, is it going to get a match, you know, uh-oh, it stopped working, now i got to restart the game and all of that. And I, I fully expect that's going to happen today. I, I really don't think that Capcom will have fixed it. I don't think they're ever going to fix it. Because the net code for this game was written by one person. That's not an exaggeration, it came out in the news, one person wrote the entire net code for this game. And at launch it still didn't work, so they basically got rid of that guy and they, they outsourced it to Korea. And Koreans wrote the, the net code. And fixed it. You know, maybe if, if you're inept at what you do and you're not going to hire a form, formal dev team to actually work on your game, maybe you should just fucking outsource it to begin with. But I digress. Uh, I have no idea if it's going to work or not. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of expecting wasted time on today's stream, which is fine, whatever. I, it's always been like that, so it's certainly nothing different. It's par for the course for Street Fighter V, alright? Now, the intention of today's stream, the only real intention... Is it to get better at the game? Is it to get tons of wins? To talk shit on the internet? To complain? No. The goal of today's stream is to just get readjusted to the game. Get used to playing it. Remember how to freaking play it. Because the bottom line is uh, that I have not played it in a while. And I'm probably going to be incredibly rusty. Trying to remember bread and butter combos. Trying to remember, uh, you know, basic strategies. And I'm probably going to lose a ton. As you know, uh, sadly, they changed the netcode 
uh, back in February. It was actually, originally when the, the first week the game was out, uh, you would play against everyone who was ranked under you, so every match was a pushover match. Then they changed the netcode to make you only play people above you. Even when you're doing unranked matches, you still play people who have thousands upon thousands of fight points more than you. And they never changed it back, and they never added an option to fix it so you can have people of your equal or lesser skill. Case in point today, I would like to play people of equal or lesser skill so I could get readjusted to the game. That won't happen because Capcom didn't put that in the game because they suck. I don't know what else to say. Um, <clears throat> so because of that, I'm probably going to lose a ton. And that's okay. There's people who've been playing this game non-stop since February. The hardcore gamer heads who think this is the end-all, be-all of fighting games, which it is not. Uh, and in fact, we've had a lot of things come to light over the past several uh, months since I've been not playing the game. Uh, it was revealed publicly that this game has 8 seconds of input lag. Excuse me, not 8 seconds. 8 milliseconds. Boy, that was a misspoke there. 8 milliseconds of input lag. The most of any competitive fighting game. And at first it came out, they were like, oh, this was intentional. We designed the game to be like that. Then apparently, you know, people in the stream chat are telling me that maybe Combo Fiend had come out at some point and said, no, it wasn't intentional. It was a translation error that this was supposed to be, you know, it was not intentional at all. And it was a mistake. The bottom line is this game has more delay between when you push a button and when something actually happens in the game than any competitive Street Fighter game ever before. Leading to inescapable setups, completely uh, overpowered setups for certain characters. Apparently Ken now is the best character or one of the best characters in the game because everyone has found a way to do these dash cancel setups where it's kind of like a 50-50, and since you can't really react because there's so much input delay in the game, Ken is always on the advantage. Which makes sense, because I've had matches with Ken where it seemed like everything he did was completely safe. And that's the bottom line. It actually is. It actually is. It's an unfair, unbalanced game because of this input lag. Now, it's hilarious, because over the past week... There was a, a big tournament, and there's a lot of interviews and stuff on event hubs. And I just glanced through them, because I knew, you know, I know that Street Fighter expansion's coming up. Let's see. And I see one interview from a guy who's a pro player who only plays with Ken, and says, Oh, people who are complaining about the input lag should just shut up and play more. And I'm listening to this guy, and I'm like, You're playing the character that benefits from the input lag, and you're telling everyone else who doesn't play a character who benefits from it to play more. What a douchebag. Ha <laughs> ha! What a fucked up asshole who obviously doesn't even understand the mechanics of the fucking game. I mean, what a dick. And then I read stuff from, like, a, a Tokido. Tokido, who's a, a Japanese player, well-regarded, who I have history with. We've uh, had rivalries in the past regarding Super Turbo and its different versions. And he basically said that in Japan, they don't even play this game online. They don't bother. They just play it offline so that they can actually learn, i.e., you know, avoid any kind of lag from playing online. And they share strategies and stuff in person, and that's the best way to learn the game. And I wholeheartedly agree. You know, this is uh, coming from someone who used to actually learn uh, from from uh, playing offline. I used to be a, a pro player, and I would primarily spend my time in arcades or at someone's house playing the console version of the game. That was the way you learned. It wasn't about online play like a lot of people only do today. You know, in Street Fighter V, it needs to be said, I've never played this game offline. I've only played people online ever. Never played an offline match. I have no idea, uh, you know, what exactly it's about. You know, if it, is it any better without online play? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. And uh, it's kind of funny because, you know, Capcom and, you know, all the tournament directors are still touting that Street Fighter V is the most played Street Fighter ever, and they'll have the most entrance ever at EVO for this game. Yet, if you look at sales numbers, the game's sales are nowhere near where Capcom wanted them. Compared to Street Fighter IV, this game is a joke. Like, Street Fighter IV has outsold this game multiple times. Alright? And I'm just talking vanilla. I'm not talking how they resold Street Fighter IV. Just vanilla Street Fighter IV sold multiple times over the amount of copies that Street Fighter V has sold. So I could give two shits how many people entered to EVO. No one bought the game compared to Street Fighter IV. And just to give you some perspective, all right? Just to give you some perspective here. On Street Fighter V versus Street Fighter IV. 
uh, back when Street Fighter 4 came out, like, it was crazy popular. Like, virally popular. Every, everyone was talking about Street Fighter 4. Everyone ran out and bought... I mean, every casual gamer pretty much owned a copy of Street Fighter 4. In fact, I remember when Street Fighter 4 was new and hot, that at my local game stores, and I'm not just talking GameStop, I'm talking all of the game stores, Best Buy, uh... Uh, Walmart, anyone who sold games, uh, there was a, what was it, Game Exchange, even the indie, kind of indie store, smaller stores, they would all get in the joysticks, right, the official Street Fighter 4 joysticks, the second those fucking things came in, they would sell, and those things cost $150, but the second they would get a joystick in, it would fly off the fucking shelf, because that's how virally popular Street Fighter 4 was, it was just the thing, the in thing, everyone was talking about it, it was the hot thing, right? Well, guess what? Just to give you some perspective here, last weekend, not this week that passed, but the week before, I actually went to my local Fry's, my local electronics store here out in Washington State. They had, I'm not kidding you, like this is not a joke or an exaggeration, three sections, three giant bookshelf sections of joysticks for Street Fighter V. They had... The Hori Real Arcade Pro 4, which is actually the one that I bought last year in preparation for the Street Fighter V beta that released last summer. They had uh, two different versions of a large Mad Cats joystick. One that was like 150 bucks, and one that was like 200 or something like that. And then they even had another joystick for the game. A mini version, like if you don't have money to spend on a, on a good joystick, buy this crappy rinky-dink mini one that looks like a piece of crap. Like the parts look really terrible. And I can't imagine anyone playing effectively on this tiny one. Um, three giant sections. I counted, it was about a hundred joysticks. It's just sitting there, unsold. Okay? All, you know, Street Fighter Five, Street Fighter Five. No one is buying this game, and no one is buying joysticks. I can't imagine these companies making any kind of money. You know what I mean? I can't. Like, it's so different. It's such a different experience. Uh, and, and when you hear all this negativity about the game, it's kind of like, what did Capcom fucking do here, man? Like, really? I, it's just like... <sighs> I have to shake my head. Being someone who grew up with Street Fighter, being someone that this is my background, this is what got me into high-level competitive gaming, I, I mean, and this is a funny thing, I actually said this to the stream chat earlier, when I was just starting up the stream today, I said, thank God, thank God, I did not go, like, hardcore into Street Fighter V, because I was debating doing it, when Street Fighter V was announced, and everyone was looking at it, and the game looked good, Everyone said, Phil, you know, are you going to get heavy into Street Fighter again? Are you going to go to tournaments? Are you going to become competitive? Are you going to be playing like crazy and do online sessions of certain characters and challenge people online and do these sets and all of that? Because we'd like to see that. <clears throat> and I said, you know what? <clears throat> Let's see. Let's take a look at the game when it releases. Together, collectively. Let's see what the game is. Let's see how it goes, right? Because the thing is, back in, you know, 2009... When Street Fighter 4 came out, again, it was virally popular with everyone. Not just the competitive scene, but casual players. Every person had a copy of Street Fighter 4. I was putting out videos of Street Fighter 4 that were getting insanity. Insanity amounts of attention and views. They were just casual matches. Me messing around. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Pretty crazy, you know? And the bottom line is that Street Fighter 5 isn't like that at all anymore. All right? It's that simple. It's uh, it's just not... If I had gone hardcore, hardcore in the Street Fighter V, for let's say, let's say February, March, and April, I played just Street Fighter V and I ignored all of the releases of those months, I probably would have fucked myself completely and I might have to quit YouTube. That's the bottom line. Because <laughs> that the game doesn't perform at all. No one cares about this game. Outside of the hardcore competitive community, everyone pretty much has said, fuck Street Fighter V. And I said this back in February, right? I said, first impressions, first impressions are everything. And when you release a game like Street Fighter V, no story mode like every other fighting game has, 
No real offline modes, no trials, nothing like that. The online play didn't work, no online play lobbies. The game was released as a piece of fucking bare-bones shit to rip people off so they could start their tournament scene. That was it. That was it. And Capcom has already come out publicly and admitted we fucked up. But it's too late. It's too late now. And my question is, what's going to happen with Street Fighter? You know what I mean? And the bottom line is, it's a shame. Because if you actually look at the game, and I'll be honest here, I like the game. I like the, what some of the character redesigns. I like some of the gameplay mechanics of the game. But they completely screwed the game up for non-hardcore players, and no one cares. And I, you know, people say, oh, what are you talking about? The hundreds of thousands of people that watch on stream. Those are the only people that care. The stream monsters, right? The hardcore. You cannot have a successful game launch based on a couple hundred thousand people. You need to get millions of people involved to have a successful video game in 2016. And Street Fighter V is not that. <clears throat> so, all that being said... I am still playing the game today. I do like Street Fighter V. I want to play it more. I want to play the expansion characters. I definitely am interested in this cinematic story mode that's coming out this weekend. In fact, I might even do that before I even try out the new characters. I may be doing the cinematic story mode this weekend. We'll see. All right. But I am just very saddened, very saddened by what has become of Street Fighter because of a bunch of misguided game developers who absolutely refused to listen to any consumer input besides those who are the hardcore players, right? Ooh, we watch every stream and we're stream monsters and we're the pro players and we're the most important. And now Capcom is unfortunately realizing those aren't the people who keep them in business. Sadly. That you listen to the wrong fucking people. The wrong element. And I hate to say it. I really do hate to say it. It was people during the Street Fighter 4 era, alright? It was people who weren't the most hardcore players who probably sold more copies of Street Fighter 4 than the hardcore, you know? The rise of people like Maximilian, right? He wasn't known for being a top-level competitive player, but how many copies of Street Fighter 4, of Marvel vs. Capcom 3, did he sell on YouTube through his creative series and his personality and basically just being kind of a really fun, upbeat person when he played the game? That's what fucking sells games today. Not the hardcore pro player community. Ugh. So, I don't know. I, and all they had to do was ask. All they needed to do was reach out to the right fucking people and ask. And they would have gotten the best possible business feedback they needed. Instead, they listened to every wrong fucking person. And now they're in the financial straits that they're in. Oh, well. All right. So, anyway, I had to vent a little bit there on pre-stream. Um, all right. I am going to now begin with Street Fighter V. <laughs> oh, by the way, I guess I should say this, okay? I guess I should say this. Tonight is the premiere of a new game. Tonight, I'm playing LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. I'm actually doing cooperative gameplay with my girlfriend, Leanna. And that game I was supposed to play today, Inside, I'll be playing tomorrow. Alright, so that's going to start tomorrow when the game actually releases. Sorry I couldn't play it today like I had originally promised. Alright. Um, and, you know, since we got a bunch of people on the stream, real quick with the gratuitous plugs, you've been staring at them the entire time. All right, but follow me on Twitter at they call me DSP. Please check out my new channel KO Gaming One. Uh, there on YouTube where I'm doing reviews and is very popular right now. It actually took off in the past couple of months. People are really liking the content on there. It's a brand new thing for me. I hope you'll check it out. I mean, I'm talking a video that almost has uh, you know a million views right now, which is pretty crazy. Uh, obviously, my Patreon. I do need to mention this. All right, only one day left to pledge to my Patreon for the month of June. And we have not yet hit the goal. I could tell you as of last night, a bunch of people actually pledged. So we're actually closer to the goal. But from what I saw, we're still between, say, like $75 to $100 short of the June monthly goal. I would love to do a Sonic Marathon. I would love if patrons would vote. You want to see me play either Sonic 1 through 3 or Sonic Adventure or Sonic the Hedgehog from 2006. It's up in the hands of the patrons, but we have to hit the monthly goal, and right now we haven't yet. There's only 24 hours left to pledge to my Patreon to hit this goal. So please consider doing it if you haven't yet, all right? Just throwing that out there. There's also an Amazon associate link in the description of all of my videos and streams. If you already shop on Amazon.com, and you like my content, you want to see it continue, you want to help support me, give a click on that link, and then go shopping as normal. 
on Amazon, and uh, I get a little bit of referral credit. That's appreciated. And, of course, my girlfriend, Leanna, has her own business called The Black Current, as you can see here on the title card at Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash The Black Current. And, uh, you know, she says sells handmade glycerin soaps, wax tart melts. She recently just launched her summer line of product, and I certainly hope that some people will check it out. It's funny because if you don't realize it, most people who buy, buy stuff from her are viewers of my streams. And they love the stuff. They're blown away by the quality. She's got nothing but positive feedback in the year and a half that she's been in business. So please consider, uh, you know, ordering. It's good stuff for you or for a friend or for a gift, all right? All right, that's it. Really quick plugs, as you heard. That's it. Let's get started with Street Fighter V. Here we go.